This is Jets FM on the OFN as uh, we once again talk New York Jets winless football for 2020. Uh, Not a lot to get into. This will definitely be one of our shorter shows for more reasons than one. Uh, But there are some things to get into. How's everything going, Jan? I'm good. Thank you. All right. So uh, I think now we're at the point on this show or at least I am, where I'm, I'm putting after this game on uh, and, and the, to say what you want about, it's probably a bad, probably the worst matchup for the Jets all season. They just don't match up well with the Dolphins. Timing and all that was bad, whatever the case may be. Um, but it was bad timing for, for, for Darnold and for, and for Adam Gase, because they just didn't have enough lifelines left. And I think they pretty much have used up all of them. Uh, after this performance last week at the end of the show, we talked about, you know, I kind of felt there was still a chance maybe I kind of, and, and I didn't give a percentage, but I was probably thinking about 35, 40% that Gaze could be back kind of down to 5% now. Um, can't argue with that. I mean, look at last and week. Darnold, uh, by I mean, the way. I, I, and I, I thought the defense played okay. I don't think they played great. Um, I mean, they, no, the defense they did a did good a, job. Yeah, they did a decent job. Look, I mean, they got the late score, the Dolphins to make the score look even better. But the Jets were, were somewhat in the game. And one of the things you talked about last week, especially, is is with quote unquote all the playmakers, uh, meaning all three wide receivers, being right. on the field for the same time with Darnold. Yeah. And there's a couple of good videos that were done. I think Robbie Sabo did one where he showed that he had Crowder on a hook route that was wide open deep. And Darnold just didn't even, I don't know if he just didn't look at him, didn't see him, was afraid to pull the trigger, but Darnold just ended up running through the running up in the middle as opposed to pulling the trigger. Now, we, we've, you know, we've always talked about plays can be missed on the field and, and quarterbacks can miss things. But unfortunately, what we've seen so far way too often with Darnold is that it's a propensity and a frequency for that to happen. And that, that's a play where the play design was great. I mean, and you've been a big at, proponent of you can't always blame the coaches, right? So this is one of those where, whether it's Loggins or Gaze calling the play, and we can kind of go into that if we need to. No, but whoever called to. the play was, was a was a really good play call because, honestly, Crowder was wide open running down the left sideline. That it was an easy throw for a halfway decent quarterback that would have been about a 55-yard touchdown I ended up being a six-yard gain up the middle by Darnold. And that's just endemic of some of the issues on this team and maybe the lack of confidence and maybe the inability to just pull the trigger. And part of that is maybe the absence or whatever reason you want to call it, but that's just the, another example of there are plays to be made that aren't being made. And you, you've talked a lot about him missing Robbie Anderson deep last year or the last two years and not taking advantage of, of situations. This is just another example where in this case, he didn't even throw the ball, but if he had, there was a pretty good likelihood the Jets would have had a 55 yard touchdown given how wide open Crowder was down the left sideline. Yeah. And it's, uh, but it's also something that we, kind of talked about preseason that Gase and Darnold were going to be tied to the hip and that whether it was Darnold's fault or Gase's fault, the fact is if they, if, if there wasn't success, especially from Darnold's point, a uh, point of view, Gase was going to more than likely sink with him, whether he, whether he's to blame or not. And uh, yes, the receivers were back. No, the offensive line was not perfect. That's still not an excuse like you sh- like you saw in the one play. The plays are still there to be made. The interception was terrible. Typical Sam Darnold having a decent game. Things are going okay. You're still in it, and then he throws the game away for no reason. That you just sit there and go, what are you? I mean, how many times is he going to – how often? How, how can he keep doing this? And it's, it's uh, over. Wait, wait, do- but unfortunately, as we've seen, what's that? Yeah, and the problem is that we talked about it afterwards. Saying, the problem is he talks about it afterwards, saying how he yes. needs to be better and knows that he yes. needs to be better. Yet the problem is, it's good to know that you need to be better, but you need to translate theory into practice. And I, look, one of the things I was really, really—I mean, I wish I had an opportunity to be a guest on a show with some of these guys up in New York. I just wish, you know, on this Michael K show, these guys trashing well to remember it's a jet network so I, well, yeah you and, and that's even worse and trashing gaze b- 
because he's not kissing Sam Darnold's ass. Completely trashed him. Can't you say something positive? Can't you just lie and say that, yeah, Sam Darnold's going to break out any day now? The exact opposite is what we've been talking about on this show. He needs to be tougher, let alone kid gloves. This is why This is why we also mentioned uh, uh, around the same time span, Sam Donald just doesn't fit in New York. He just doesn't. He's got to get out of New York. He's not made for New York. Whether who doesn't matter who the coach is going to be. He, he just it. You you keep thinking from what the way he talks. Oh, okay. You know, I guess he's going to figure it out. He seems like he's a sharp kid. They all say positive things. No, he's just not. He's got to go somewhere else. And I'm I, sorry, but I, he needs tougher love. I don't know not, if it's that though, right? I I. I, I, I but I think also, I don't know. I don't know whether or not you need kid gloves or tough love or whatever you want to refer to it. And granted, whatever he's doing right now is not working. But he may be giving him all the right answers and maybe giving him all the right um, feedback behind the scenes. But eventually, it comes down to translating that onto onto the field. And what the problem is with Darnold is not. Look, I still think Darnold could be a good quarterback in the NFL. The problem is you talked about it's probably most likely not going to be here. And I think part of that is because the Jets in probably all likelihood, unless something goes really pear-shaped, they're going to end up with the number one overall pick. And if they get the number one overall pick, they're going to take Trevor Lawrence, irrespective of anything else that's going on around it. Now, if Darnold was lighting it up and the defense was getting absolutely torched and the reason they were 0-11 at this point in time was because of that, then maybe he could save his job. But, you know, Darnold had opportunities even before he went out with the injury um, and also um, on the injury um, you know, he came back and had an opportunity this week and just didn't did not make plays. And the problem is, is at some point in time, you need to, quote unquote, cut your losses. And if a guy who is viewed as being a difference maker as Lawrence and I'm, I'm look, I still think Darnold has a shot to be a good quarterback somewhere else. I do think he needs to go somewhere, probably sit for a year, regain some of the confidence that he's most likely lost yep. and then potentially see what happens moving forward. It is it feasible it could be in New York? It's feasible. I don't I don't foresee that no, ever happening. No. Um, but the but the pretend the question is what what kind of draft pick are you going to get for him? Because keeping him on the on the roster, if and when Lawrence gets here, and granted, look, there's a, still a long way to go until that happens, it's probably not optimal for either one of them. Um Lawrence probably just needs to be given the keys to the castle oh, and, and, and run with it, regardless of who comes in as the coach. Oh, yeah. And that's gonna be on Joe Douglas to find the right guy also to fill that position. Oh yeah. I mean Trevor Lawrence is gonna wherever he goes, he's starting day one. So that's not even a question. Yep. So that's why Darnold won't be here. Darnold will mm-hmm. be traded. I think you could probably get somewhere between a second and third round draft pick for him. He still has talent, he's still young. Teams are desperate to find these types of quarterbacks. And he's young enough that all you have to do is kind of put him, say, okay, well, if you put him in this class, where would he go? So that's why I think you can still get a second or third round draft pick for him, which is, uh, which is fine. Um, what I'm nervous about is not getting that first pick. It really makes me nervous because if we don't get the first round pick, it's like, it's like I'd rather it just wouldn't matter, uh, you know, whether or not we had the fifth pick, the eighth pick, the second. It just doesn't matter. Uh, they can say all they want about Josh Fields, but Josh Fields is no different than some of the other, uh, even Trask. I might even want Trask over Fields. So there, and, and you know what? Maybe after these kids, if, whenever they decide to come out and then they get prodded and all that, and everybody takes a look, depending on what they can do this offseason with COVID. Fact is, there is a possibility that we could see a reshuffling from the second quarterback to the third or the fourth once they get the opportunity to see the Florida kid, the BYU kid, uh, uh, Fields, and so forth. So there is no guarantee. That's what makes me nervous. And But Darnold won't be here. And I can guarantee you that unless Darnold does something dramatic over the last few games of the season, there is no way Sam Darnold will be on this team next year, no matter who the coach is. Uh, and no matter whether or not the Jets have the first pick or not, it's that's it. I mean, they're not just going to go, oh, we didn't get Trevor Lawrence. Okay, we drafted you know, one of these other guys. All right, well, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll make it a competition next year with Darnold. No, if Darnold doesn't prove in the next few weeks that he can possibly still be the guy and the Jets do not get the first round pick, he will not be here. I, I agree. Uh, I would say, though, that the possibility of him being here increases somewhat dramatically if they don't get the number one overall pick. Because if you're going to view these guys as, as a reach, 
does it make sense to reach? Does it make sense to fill another need and worry about the quarterback afterwards? Well, I'm as not long as you get a good draft the strategy they though. take. Right. I mean, if well, if if, you, if think, somebody's going to say we'll give you a fifth for Darnold, then I can see. Oh, forget it. We'll bring him back next year ourselves. We'll just keep him on the team. But yeah, it's got to be. You got to give the Jets a second or a third at the at the least for the for them to go. Okay, we we have Josh Fields or we have whoever Trask, whoever you want. That's our guy. But we just can't have. You know, that's going to be because again, whoever if the Jets use that first pick on a quarterback that's not Trevor Lawrence, that quarterback is still going to be the quarterback on day one. You know, no quarterback gets picked in the top five and doesn't get the keys to the engine day one. So most probably I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. I mean, again, I think it depends on obviously who that quarterback is and how whether or not they view him as ready now or something who's ready in about a year. And I think part of that's going to be the determination factor in terms of who they're going to select and whether or not they view any of the quarterbacks beyond Lawrence as a true difference maker to be your number one quarterback. Yeah, and, and that's uh, that's. If not, you just don't take them, right? You take the best available player to fill a potential need, or best available player in general, and then worry about it afterwards. So just take a quarterback because you have a high pick. If you're not fully sold on sure. him, I can't see Joe Douglas doing so. And I, but I I do think there are there there are enough talented kids that they all come out. I think there are enough of them, where I, I would guess Douglas will will take a liking to one of them not named Trevor Lawrence if he doesn't get the first pick. Um, Because there's going to be at least three or four of them. And I think he'll probably like one of them. And if he likes one of them, that's all it's going to take. As long as he can get him, and I'm sure he'll be able to, because he'll if he doesn't get the first pick, he's going to get the second pick. And it might even behoove the Jets, if they get the second pick, if Fields isn't their guy. Because again, I'm not infatuated with Fields. Uh, I, I might even end up liking uh, 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 Trask over Fields. I think I think Wilson is going to go higher than people. And I agree also. too. I even Wilson might even be someone I would like over Fields as well. I think he's more of a pro style quarterback yeah. than the other guys. So I, I and if that's the case, then you know what trade trade down a couple spots from and, and get yep. another really good pick. So there. So all is not lost, but I think the worst case scenario is you get the second pick and then you just use it to pick Fields. I don't want to see that. I, that means you're not this, getting an extra draft pick. You're 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 risking it on a guy just like we saw with Haskins, with not a lot of experience. He never gets touched in the pocket with these Ohio State games. You don't know what you have. Yes, he's a more efficient quarterback that Haskins was. There's a lot to like there, but he's just so raw that he's just not ready like some of these other guys are going to be. And I just I just think there's a gamble, a big gamble with Fields. Agreed. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that there's talent there. I just don't know how that manifests itself in terms of an NFL offense. And um, look, the one thing we can say is, I know this is going to be Gallo's humor, is uh, the games will be interesting for the next five weeks, mainly because we're going to be looking at our own scoreboard and looking at the Jacksonville yeah. scoreboard. And, and it's something that, look, if Jacksonville wins another game and it's a two-game spread, you have a little cushion and maybe that last week won't matter. But I think we all expect that coming down to New England game, that game's going to matter. And for, for purposes for as a Jet fan, and it's going to sound weird, you want New England to be in a position where they're battling for Absolutely. a wild card spot, right? Because then they have then they're forced yes. to play. And then Consider we know the we'll lose. Belichick, Belichick loves sticking it to the Jets. Yes. If he has nothing to play for, he may really have nothing to play for yeah. and decide to go with backups. the backup quarterback or rest guys and other yeah. than that. And then you could you can see a scenario where <clears throat> Excuse me. The Jets pull out a last last second victory, um, and they pull they snatch the def- they snatch the feet from the jaws of victory, for lack of a better term. Yeah, which of course, knowing the Jets, that could very well happen. Yep. Okay. Now, a uh, few things from the game, by the way. Very strange to see Alex Lewis, a major defender of Adam Gase during the offseason. Uh, there, there's something happened there. Not sure what it was. They're keeping it in house, which is what I like. I'm glad to see Lewis keep it in house. Case is keeping it in house, but Lewis isn't even practicing so far this week. So nope. uh, it must have been pretty yeah, serious. It must have been really serious. I mean, look, I, I'm I'm impressed with the fact that it kept it in house because we know in the past that wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. That leaks were getting out all over the place. So it's good that they've kept it in house, but clearly not a good look for Lewis. The fact that he didn't play last week and he hasn't practiced yet this week, and there it, it's it's either a violation of team rules. Um, which is the more likely occurrence. I, I mean, for something like this, that would kind of fall into the realm of what that is. Yeah. And it could have, uh, you know, could have, uh, that's why it's hard, it's hard for me to believe that it would be a, 
a thing where he disrespected the coach, considering he was the one that stuck up for Gase in the offseason. So, but anything's possible. Uh, you know, it was uh, once again, how many times have we seen it? The Jets march down the field, the first possession, they get inside the 10 yard line, and then they stumble and they got to kick the field goal and not score the touchdown. And then the promising drive, we don't see really much again for a while. And this is what's been going on with Sam Darnold. You know, it's, these are the plays he pra- they practice the most, the, you know, the first 15 plays, whatever. And anything outside of that, this is why we think with experience, the more he practices plays, the more he gets reps in practice, maybe he will become a better quarterback. Because when there are times, like on these initial drives, like he throws this perfect pass to a 35-yard pass to Perryman, who makes a really good catch. And the way that he threw the ball, Darnold, it looked like, wow, look how confident he looks. Maybe this is the new Sam Darnold after taking a few weeks off. Maybe we're going to see a really good Sam Darnold over the last uh, month of the season. And then there just wasn't enough of those the rest of the game. It's like, it's just amazing how different Darnold could look from one or two possessions to the rest of the game. I, I don't know what it is. It's just the inconsistency of him as quarterback. I, I don't know if there's any other way to explain it. I don't, I think we're all kind of scratching our heads at times to understand why that's the case. Um, look, he has those in game moments where everything that seems to have been worked on seems to vanish. Um, I, I just don't know if it's a lack of experience. I just don't know if it's a lack of confidence that there's, I don't know if there is a, a tangible reason you can tie it to, but as you said, you know, things go great, things go great, things go great. And then all of a sudden we're all expecting the wheels to fall off the bus. And, and that's what exactly what happens. The wheels fall off the bus and then it takes forever. And almost at times just doesn't happen at all that he's able to recapture the way he looked early in the game when they went down the field. Yeah, there's uh, t- t- and and I I think that he also doesn't have a really good feel for the game. That's just it. And I know he played linebacker in high school. T- took him really long time before he switched over to quarterback. And maybe that has a lot to do with it. But you know, maybe it's just about hey, he's all arm. You know, he's all he's this gifted athlete that really was probably better off. Maybe he had a mind for defense and he just doesn't, that that mind hasn't translated to to the offense because I just, he just doesn't have a good feel. He doesn't. He's the exact opposite of Patrick Mahomes. You know, Patrick Mahomes is all feel, you know, everything about what he does is just amazing. Darnold is the exact opposite. He He doesn't have any of that. Like if he does break out and, and make a play with his, with his legs or makes a play where you go, wow, great. I think most of that's accident, accidental. You know, it's like, oh, well, okay, that was my fifth option. I got the chance. Now I'll go. I, I, you know, it's like, it's like when he took the sack against Denver. Like he just doesn't have a, a feel for the game. And you have to have a feel for the game to be a quarterback in the NFL, especially to be a good one. I agree. I mean, but look, Mahomes is just gifted in that manner. He also came from a family, given his father pitched for the Mets, that has an athletic gene in it and has the ability to adapt athletically and kind of see the whole picture, Mahomes is gifted. Look, I, I, it's no disrespect to Darnold being compared to Mahomes and doesn't well, have having that skill. That's why I said the complete skills, opposite. But, but, right, but, but that there's doesn't a, There's 20 or 30 Darnold, other guys right. that he's still worse right, right. of. Right. That doesn't mean that Darnold can't be an effective quarterback, just a matter of that inability to do so limits potentially his, uh, his upside potential. Though I think when he was drafted, we all thought that might have been there. Uh, especially given how he looked in the Rose Bowl, unfortunately, just really hasn't translated here. No. And that's why it's going to take. It's going to take him a while. He, he like, again, he, he he has to go somewhere. He can, he, and he might have to sit for a couple of years. He, he's still young. He's got to learn maybe from a really good veteran quarterback. Maybe he can be Aaron Rodgers' backup somewhere for a couple of years if Rodgers leaves Green Bay. Go somewhere where you get a, a Hall of Fame quarterback to learn from for a few years, and then maybe you could be the starter after that. But he's got a long way to go, and the Jets definitely don't have the time to wait. Uh, and I don't think any of that's going to change over the next few weeks. And like you were saying, I mean, I'm watching the Jacksonville game, and you know, you, it's so just... Garner, Garner Minshew comes back this week. So, is he getting the start? I think so. That was the rumor I thought I'd heard that he should be back this week. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe what health wise or yeah, well, health wise. I I I don't I can't see them. They were pretty critical of. I know Maroney was pretty critical of him. And then 
Glennon gets the shot after Luton and actually played well. So I can't imagine no, he going to take Glennon out. I know. I mean, it's possible. I look. I mean, irrespective of who plays quarterback, I mean, Jacksonville's. In I mean, the they same actually boat have as a chance to beat Minnesota. Minnesota is no great team. Minnesota is no, a team I, that, can, I, that can have a bad game. I agree, I, I, but I, I don't think they're going to beat Minnesota. Look, they gave Cleveland all they can handle last week. I uh, was impressed by the style, of, by what the game they played. Um, and Cleveland has pulled out a lot of games so far this year. Their their record belies just in terms of how well they've actually played, in my opinion. I think their record doesn't reflect as to how good that team is in terms of it. I mean, inversely, because I don't know if they're really a 7-3 and three team right now. Um, but again, time will tell. I mean, well, they're, I they're we'll beating the teams they happens. have to beat. So they're yeah, beating which the bad is what you're teams, supposed to do. And, and that's, that's, yeah. And the only thing is your record, you are who your record says you are, like Bill Parcells used to say. So, uh, first opportunity for Castillo to take the job and run with it with Ficken on IR, and he blows it. So, uh, yeah, Camus, Camus, a 29 yard field goal. No. So, once again, it looks like the Jets are going to have an open competition for place kicking next year. Uh, Mims, meanwhile, uh, on the good side, Mims, Quinn and Williams, you know, there is some young talent on this team that is starting to grow. That's why, see, if you look at some of the other teams like that are around where the Jets are, uh, like even say Jacksonville, uh, you know, the, 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 the Jets, the difference is the Jets may not have a lot of depth, and we know that's the case. That's why they're a pretty, really bad football team. The depth is really bad. But there is a lot of hope based on already you can, you can point to about a handful of really good, talented players that can be the fa- part of the foundation here. And considering most of, the, all, most of those guys weren't even here a year or two ago, that's a good sign that we're not where we were two years ago. We were already, a, again, if you're just looking at windless and, and the Gase and Darnold factor, you lose sight, which is why we try to have as much perspective on this show every week. You lose sight of all the little good things that are happening with some of these young players. And Mims continues to look like he's going to be a really good player. I, I think Perryman again, we'll see what they do with him. Bringing it back would make sense. I know Ashton Davis got beat for the touchdown, but he's a young kid. He's going to get beat. You know, Lamar Jackson's now getting a chance to play. It wasn't like he looked, it wasn't like he looked like, you know, he, he, he was, he was as bad as Millette. So Good. Get Lamar Jackson out there. Let's see what he can do for the next uh, four or five weeks. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, and of course Becton. So and Quinn and Williams. So it, there, there are some things to be, especially when you have a guy like Joe Douglas making the moves. The, the, the plethora of draft picks this organization has over the next couple of years. There is a lot of hope, and 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 I can tell you, if they do draft Trevor Lawrence, hope is going to change like that. Not just because of Trevor Lawrence, but because of all the other young players that they have now and that they're going to build on this team over the next couple of drafts. There's there, there's a really good foundation being laid here, which is why the whole thing with Trevor Lawrence is so huge. So you, I think you made the key point is young, right? So I think good to have players, but it's even better to have players that are growing uh, irrespective of the of, of the record, regardless of what's going on, the benefit is is that they're getting the experience. Are right? you talked Davis struggled last week? Okay, it's good that he's getting beaten now. Where it really doesn't matter because you hope that down the road, the what he'll what he has learned now yeah. will pay dividends down the road. Same with same with Bryce Hall. Quinn and Williams is becoming the dominant force that we were hoping he yes. was going to be. Back we know we have Becton. Uh, you know you have Mims. The other piece of the policy we talked, you said earlier in the call, earlier in our discussion, is the depth, right? It's the lack of depth, mm-hmm. it's the lack of talent beyond just a handful of individuals. And I think the key then is to build that talent around there. If you get Lawrence and you have another draft pick, and you hopefully get another offensive lineman, you put back bookends around Lawrence between Beckton and whoever else they add. You augment with some other talented guys, especially we've talked about on the defensive side of the ball in terms of what they need and given all the cap room. They should be able to go out and sign a handful of those guys. Then all of a sudden, you look at the uplift of talent, and you're not looking at guys that are 27, 28 years old. You're looking at guys that are 23, 24, yes. 25. There's a big difference in terms of the potential growth opportunity associated with them over a period of time. Uh, I mean, look, I know Leonard Williams took a lot of flack here. I- I'm happy to see that he's played well for the Giants and kind of performing somewhat in line with what the expectations were here. 
which is an evidence that, look, not every player develops at the same linear growth pattern. It may take a while, but you would hope that certain guys will develop and then the guys behind them develop and then they all coalesce at that same point in time. Just hopefully that that time frame for which everybody becomes good and they start to become potentially a contender isn't too far down the road after they've added Lawrence and some of the other talent you hopefully to add over the next year or two. Well, also, yeah, and but yeah, as far as the Jets are concerned, the there is going to still be a lot to get excited about without Trevor Lawrence, but with him, it's just it, it it's just going to be so much more hopeful and 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 I think people say if you don't have Trevor Lawrence, it's going to probably take the organization maybe a couple more years to get to the postseason because whoever that quarterback is going to be, unless he turns out to be really special, um, it's going to take a while, take a couple years. Uh, and, 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 but if you have Trevor Lawrence, I think there are already enough key pieces here. I'm, I'm trusting Douglas is going to do a really good job at the draft and free agency, of course. And that next year, you know, I, I think we could be in a situation where, like, let's say where the Dolphins are this year. Because you look at the Dolphins roster, and it just shows you what a great job Brian Flores has done. I mean, that's not, that, there's not a lot there. I mean, what he has is he's got two star corners. And, you know, he's got some pretty good mix of one off season where they brought in some good veterans, you know, Jones being one of them, Van Noy, of course, he's brought in a couple of guys here and there, but the offensive line is terrible. They have no running game. They have one wide receiver, you know, so they don't have a lot, but they've, they've already built a nice foundation. Of course, having a veteran quarterback like Fitzpatrick who, who, who could still play unlike Flacco, you know, he could still play consistently. Um, I think that, if the Jets hit on a good coach and they get themselves Trevor Lawrence, I think by next season, uh, we could be, it could be dr- drastic, dramatically different and not just, Oh, hope for the future. A couple of years down the road, we'll be a playoff team. No, I, I think we'll be competitive next year. If Trevor Lawrence is everything that we're hoping for. I think that's the plan and the goal. Uh, look, I'm, I'm going to tamp down and dampen the expectations. Um, I hope that for me, the new coach and the new regime they bring in, if they hopefully get Lawrence and with the other guys they bring in, we see tangible improvement uh, where you look forward that next year is a obviously a much improved year. And then the following year is the year they really start to may, maybe start to contend, especially if they're able to keep some cap room and bring in some other talent around the guys they add in the next year. Uh, what I the one thing that I have been the, that I am the most critical of with Gase because we've talked about this too. You know, a lot of people they want most of them are good, the, the critical ones because he never they, he, did, he never wanted him here in the first place. Um, it's it's just losing, but the, we've talked about. But there isn't you know there isn't a lot of bad clock management stuff, stupid decisions during the game, that kind of thing. Sure. Does he make good decisions all the time? No, but it's just not so drastic. But the one thing that I think has been his worst by far, the thing that I just do not like, I didn't mind it the first couple of times, but now, especially in this game, this past game, I can't take it. Are the fourth and one runs. I can't take them anymore. Now I know you wanted to run behind Becton on fourth and one. I get it. But can you just show a little imagination on it? Everybody knows you're going to do it. You've done fourth and one runs the entire season. They've never worked. It's still Frank freaking Gore. I know he had a pretty good game. But just do something different. Show me some creativity. You know, I don't know. Run a play that that shows us that you have a creative offensive mind. And we're not. We're just not seeing it on these fourth and ones. And and they never work. That's that's my most critical. Uh, point towards Adam Gase in game as far as his play calling or his designs. No, it's hard to disagree. I mean, as you said, I mean, fourth and one should be one of those who convert the majority, if not the large propensity of times. And for the Jets, it's inverse where they fail to convert most often. And look, you could blame the blocking. You can blame the running back. There's probably a whole host of issues associated with each one of those failures. But as you said, if, stupidity is the definition of insanity is repeating the same action expecting a different result yeah at some point in time you would hopefully try to change it up and maybe look 
Try something different. Yes. See if that works. Then if we're not going to complain if you if you're in shotgun on fourth and one and you don't get it because you've tried already three or four times running the football. We can't complain. So try it. Or you can be on the center, or you can be on the center and 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 do a fake handoff, do a rollout, do something. Do something. Try to get the wide receiver, or maybe you spring one deep and maybe get lucky yes. on a on a play where guys guys in tight Blacko did that, didn't he? Or, or Crowder or somebody else. Yep. Blacko did that on a yep. fourth down, I believe, right? A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. The I'm pretty sure. So yep. yeah. Uh all right. Anyway. Oh, and you know what? It's interesting too because when uh, on that drive w- that ended uh, with the field goal, the first drive when Gase was when Darnold was sacked, I wonder whether or not that's one of those deals where you you have to look at the quarterback because when I looked at the protection on replay, I, I it's, it kind of looked like everybody picked up their own guys. It wasn't like somebody whiffed and 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 two offensive linemen took one guy and a guy was sprung free. So those are the times where you wonder whether or not the quarterback is making the right protection calls. That, those Could are be. things we don't I mean, know. That we don't know. Yeah. And, and we will probably never know. Uh, but that, yeah, those things like, it's those sort of things that you just can't see. I mean, all right, if it happens once a year, but it just happens just a little bit too much. All right. So, uh, oh, bad news for the Jets for free agency with Bud Dupree going down with the ACL. Yep. Yeah, so agreed. That's one less. I mean, it look maybe the maybe it maybe it turns out to be a good thing. Maybe the Steelers now say, okay, if you can get somebody to sign you, we're not going to franchise tag you. Go get what you can get, and maybe the Jets can get a bargain from Dupree, and they'll just realize he ain't going to be available until twenty twenty one, the latest, you know, late in the season or twenty twenty two. You could do that, but it's still another top pass rusher off the board, which is not a good thing. And Woody will be back at some point in January. So there's going to be a, a lot of people wondering about what happens there. I know people could say same thing. There's a lot of criticism on Christopher Johnson. I think the only reason there's criticism on Christopher Johnson is because he hired Adam Gase and because of how it was done. The whole, oh, you waited until after the draft. That, that's the only criticism they have to Chris, Christopher Johnson. To me, I think he's done an excellent job. I think he's done a better job than Woody. We've talked about how he's handled public relations within the, the, the whole racial thing. So I think that helps Jets with free agency. He's the one that hired Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas, I think, was an excellent hire. So I, I, I just, I, I, I think, especially since he won't be back until late January, which is too late, because Gase will probably, look, if Gase isn't fired on Black Monday, which will be before that, then he's probably not going to be fired, I would think. And if he is fired, then he, Christopher Johnson's already made the decision, and you're not going to wait till Woody comes back at the end of uh, you know January or early February to hire a head coach. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, again, it should be interesting to see what happens when they come back and how the how the transference of power is going to work and the impact within the organization. All right, next week we'll wrap up Las Vegas. Jets whipped them last year at home, but the Raiders got whipped last week, so they're probably going to be ready for the Jets this time around. We can only hope so. Because now, officially, Jets FM is on. We're, 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 we're rooting for losses. Let's just put it this way. L- losing for Lawrence, tanking for Trevor, whichever. Yeah, whatever you want to term. It's, it's, in, it's in full mode now. So, uh, and, then, uh, we'll, and then Jacksonville has Minnesota, so we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll root for a yep. Jacksonville win and a Jet loss, and hopefully uh, the Jets will lose a game where we'll see some good production, uh, but a W, uh, an L, when it's all said and done. Uh, we don't want to get on this show and next week talking about a Jet win and a Jacksonville loss. So, Jan, appreciate it as always. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good.